Robert Boggs with the red, and we have Dan O'Neill with the blue tape. Three three-minute rounds of MMA action coming your way. We'll also be joined by Black Santa here on the commentary. Ho, 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 you already know. Let's get it started. And there Ooh, we go. Right Robert, to the action. Yeah, Robert opened up with a nice inside leg kick, but Dan came up with a right of his own. A little clinch work here against the cage. <laughs> the crowd is excited already. She is. We got double unders here for Dan. Good job, Rob, shucking it off, and now he reverses the action. And now it's just, you know, these guys are just going back and forth here. Over, under. Dan tries to throw, misses. Uh, Boggs is very heavy on his hips. Couple nice uppercuts. Yeah. And they're, they're right there in the pocket there. Robert landed a nice knee to the solar plexus. Has a strong wizard. This is a good pace so far, Black Santa. Yeah, and I know Robert Boggs has fought for a combat night before, but just only at kickboxing. So I'm interested to know if Dan O'Neill, you know, in seeing some of his previous fights, is a little bit scared of those hands. That's why he's, you know, going right into the action. You know, yeah, he's clinch closing the distance. Pace. Exactly. Nice knee again, but uh, Dan throws a, a left hook of his own, overhand. Seems to block it, Robert seems to block that. Nice long jab by Rob. Overhand, wow, and they're slugging right now, guys. Yeah, definitely for that first fight of the evening, you definitely want Oh, yeah. To, sometimes people are like, oh, man, you know, doors open, four o'clock, I can, you know, make my way in there. But no, if you don't get here on time for these combat night fights, especially the ones in Orlando, they bring it out, whether you're the first card, the first fight on the card, or the last fight on the card. Absolutely, and you know. You're not partial to the Orlando fights, are you? Eh. <laughs> <laughs> what he's saying is you guys don't want to miss the action whenever combat night comes to your town and throws an event. You want to be there from the first fight to the very last fight. Exactly. Because it's full of action pack. Look at these guys go. Dan separates here, they're in the center of the combatagon. Oh! Ooh. Nice kick there. Lick that up there nicely. Trade jabs. Yeah, that was a good the feint there by Dan. Nice. Dan threw oh, a yeah. feint jab. Clinch to the uppercut. Oh. Calf kick there by Robert. And he's shooting. First level change attempt. Great hips there by Robert. And they're calling for suplexes over here on Dan's corner. <laughs> Nice hip toss there by Robert Boggs. Good job, Dan, scrambling there. At least he's getting to his knees, clinches, and gets back up. Beautiful work by both of these gentlemen. Nice overhand hands by Robert. And that's the end of the first round, guys. What wow. We got two more rounds of this. Yeah, two pace. more rounds of this. Judging off of that first round, coming into it, you know, like I said before, Robert being a strictly a kickboxer for combat night, I think those first 30 seconds to a minute, he was feeling, okay, no, these aren't these big gloves. When these little punches land, they land. But I think especially once Daniel O'Neill started to, you know, creep in with the takedown, once yeah. Robert was able to stuff those first Ooh, couple Dan takedowns oh. and eventually get up, I think that just, you see how comfortable oh. it started to go on in there. These so guys are really going. going. Yeah. Second round. Dan had Robert a good flurry. Sorry, sorry to speak over you. Yeah. Dan had a good flurry there. And it seemed like like Robert threw a, a straight left and it boggled him a little bit. But, man, these guys are going back and forth. But I do want to say that Robert has been training everything since he was a kid. Although this is his debut for MMA, he has been training MMA. And he's teeing off right now, guys. Yeah, exactly. Getting, I wish getting he getting would moved. go to the body. I wish he would go downstairs a little bit, switch up the, the game plan. But, uh, man. Now he's finding his face pretty easily. Oh, right? absolutely. Exactly. He stuffed Daniel Neal's takedowns a couple times. Yeah. When he did take him down, he didn't stay on the mat very long. And he has good hips and sprawled and popped back up. Oh! He's, he's telegraphing those exactly. takedowns. Yeah, and you know hey, what? But he gets one right there. He well, sort of gets one, but when he drops down like that, as soon as Robert hits a punch, I wonder how the judges are seeing that. Are they seeing that as a knockdown, or are they seeing that as him shooting? Because the way he drops down, it looks like he just drops. Exactly, yeah. Oh, he's... And even when he does drop down, he like gets a takedown there. Wow. Take down. But how long can he keep Robert? Now he's going to mount. Position. He's going to mount here. He needs to get some punches. In. He needs to bring his left <laughs> knee down and start teeing off, and maybe he can win the round back because. Now, good instructing by uh, his corner set. Push his head down. 
And now he's letting go. Stepping over. He's stepping over the mount. I'm not sure why. Well, I don't know. He's going for an arm triangle, but he. he he's just sitting in the middle of yeah. his body. And Robert saw that, and, and now he takes it back. Beautiful back. job there. Beautiful switch there by Robert. Do not know why he. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure. That full mount he he kind of telegraphed that uh, arm triangle that he was fishing for. And once again, back to it. Robert Ball starts to tee off. Yeah, Dan needs to get some offense going. Oh yeah, Robert. Yeah, both of these gentlemen are slugging back and forth. But it seems in the clinch or in that mid-range, Robert Boss is definitely getting the better hand of these of these strikes. Yeah, and, and even in the clinch, for the takedown. he's yeah. throwing up nice little short uppercuts in the clinch there. Nice knee to the body there by Robert. It seems though every time that Daniel Neal does drop down for a takedown, it's more or less out of de desperation. Yeah. Instead of it doesn't seem he doesn't set it up with any strikes. He just, oh man, I got hit, and then just drops down for that takedown. He man, it, it set it up more with like a, a simple two, three punch combination. Man, I don't know why Robert's not going to the body. I feel like you go to the body. Nice. And now we got Robert on top, full now mount. He's in full mount with ten seconds left. Last ten seconds here. And he's gonna take his time with his punches. You see? He's throwing punches. That's a good way to end the round there. Wow. Absolutely. Robert was on top. He wasn't throwing the punches with urgency, but he were landing those punches. Although they weren't 100%. They don't have they were still, to be. They, yeah, yeah no, unless the referee saying, hey, you got to defend yourself. If yeah. he doesn't see you defend yourself, he's going he's gonna to call this, the fight right there. They Third and final round, guys. Punches, yeah. Robert Boggs in the red tape versus Dan O'Neill in the blue tape. And if you're just tuning in, guys, thanks for purchasing the pay-per-view. Dan O'Neill comes out with a big overhand right. Big overhand right. It was a left hook and an overhand right. See, they're calling, they calling for Dan at head position, especially against the cage here. Yeah, going into this third round here, on my scorecards, I have Robert Boggs up two rounds to none. So to me, if Dan O'Neill wants to win this fight, he needs to go for a finish. He needs so to go for a finish. It seems like I'm his game plan is on the ground. So he needs to get him down to the ground. And the way that he was on the bottom, got finished the end of the second round, that's how he needs to close out this fight. Yep, we're not judges here, but hey, we're, we're seeing the fight. And he's going for a switch. Robert's going for a switch here. Yeah, Dan hasn't been able to do anything effective with the takedown, so perhaps the takedown is not the optimal strategy. Yeah. But at this point, energy is a premium. Exactly. Cardio is definitely a factor. I mean, that's why you have these amateur fights, so these gentlemen can assess, hey, you know what, wow, I thought, you know, three three minutes was going to be a lot, but three three-minute rounds, it seems like it's, you know, almost gassing out these both of these young people. Oh, oh my, my God! He's oh, locked he's in! Oh my goodness! Oh my God! Oh my God! Yeah. Wow! And does what, what he said. had yeah, to he do. He had to. He needed to finish. Black Santa, you called that. He was down two rounds. Wow! To if Daniel O'Neill wanted to finish this fight, wanted to win this fight, he needed to finish, and that's exactly what he. What did. an opportunity! Cardio aside, he Jesus. Was able to get the job as done. soon as I doubted him on the ground, he gets the submission finish with. Wow! The that was stroke. quick, man. And we go to the replay here. You see, Robert jumped on him. And jumped oh, on him and it, it yeah, up. it was real, it was night, real night. fast, real fast. Yeah, yeah. All right. Wow. And wow. Your and referee Isaiah has called a stop to this fight in the third round. Your winner via rear naked choke out of the blue corner, Daniel Danny Boy O'Neill. And that's why I love mixed martial arts, man. You just never know what's gonna happen. You never know. Anything can happen at any given moment. You see, we had, in my eyes, I had...